The challenge to help the people of La Conga and La Florida, remote villages in the rainforest of Panama, build a bridge over the Trinidad River, connecting their communities. Bienvenidos a La Conga! The CH Turm Hill Foundation has partnered with the not for profit organization Bridges to Prosperity in a skills-based volunteer program to construct a 45-metre pedestrian suspension bridge. La Conga is about 50 miles west of Panama City to the west of the Trinidad River, with La Florida to the east. On arriving at La Conga, the CH Turm Hill Foundation volunteers set up camp at the La Conga School. Just down the hill was the wonderful Navarro family, whose home and garden became a team's home from home, a place to eat and rest. The bridge is desperately needed. The Rio Trinidad may not look impassable now, but in the rainy season, waters rise several meters, and it can be deadly. Tengo ocho vivo, siete muerto. El primer hijo se me murieron de Una enfermedad que le decían la fombrilla, murieron. El otro me lo mató pues el río. Él se tiró al agua y lo se lo llevó el agua. Él venía a caballo, pero entonces en lo que la ola le pegó, lo sacó del caballo. Pero bueno, gracias a Dios por hacer que lo voy a ver. Lo voy a ver. Que a veces los ríos eh, están hondos. Si no hubiera sido por ustedes, nosotros siguiéramos pasando todavía río hondos. Corriéramos peligro. Eh, yo estoy feliz, estoy muy contenta porque de verdad es un avance en la comunidad. Es bien, un bienestar para todas las personas que viven aquí, especialmente para los niños. Y a través de ese puente pueden los, las personas de la comunidad pueden sacar su producto mucho más fácil. Before the volunteers arrived, the local community, with guidance from Bridges to Prosperity, had laid the foundations for the bridge. They had also collected hundreds of stones from the river to weigh down the bridge anchors, the anchors that would later hold the steel cable in place. Fue durísimo, mucho trabajo, como un mes, uh -huh. buscando las piedras. The team had to hit the ground running, but the first priority was safety. Uh, be very cautious. We've got pinching hazards. We have falling hazards, extreme heat as well. Be very cognizant. Hard hats are to be worn. Gloves are to be worn. And as always, uh, look after yourselves and look after each other. The team had six and a half days to complete the bridge. No time to lose. First, the towers had to be raised. Blake's knot tying skills came in very useful, but the first attempt to raise the near side tower didn't go well. Plan A was to use a tree that we thought was strong enough, but when we started to pull up our towers, it started to crack. It took a few more options and thinking to get through it, but um, that was definitely our most challenging part of the project. So we decided to use the scaffolding. Um, we attached a, a winch to that scaffolding. And then we use just manpower. We had about 30 guys pulling the rope. We got it done at about 20 minutes before it went pitch black. Then the cable was delivered. 
four tons of thick, greasy steel that was going to hang between the towers to support the deck. It had to be unwound from the spool and carried to the site. I will cut four lengths, and then as we do that, we'll move it through the bridge site and we'll pull it over the river. We've been pulling 100 metre cables, four of them, and they weigh a ton. Um, we've cut them all the way up there and then we've pulled them down to the towers and then I've just pulled them across the river. <laughs> Exhausting. <laughs> I can't wait. It's like boot camp. <laughs> and we will start uh, lifting the cables on top of the, of the towers. And after that, we will start pulling the main cables to get the right tension and make sure that they have the right shape. The rebar suspenders that hang the deck from the cable needed to be bent into the required shapes and cut to precise lengths. Louisa, Karen and Emily worked hard at the task in the brutal midday sun. Local members of the community spent the earlier part of the week cutting wood and drilling each piece of the metal crossbeams that would serve as a support structure for the bridge deck. They were now ready to be attached to the suspenders. We need to get half of those suspenders to the other side of the river. And those cross beams are quite heavy, as well as the suspenders to go with them. So if we can get those done today, that allows us to start decking in the morning. Laconga is in a rainforest, and it inevitably rained, slowing things down a little but work carried on. The workers were well looked after, with the community women cooking hearty meals three times a day. The volunteers, working hard, were usually ravenous. I feel very happy to have you all here in my house. They are the team had to adapt quickly to their new environment. But there were a few things some struggled to get used to. I've always been quite scared of bugs and insects, so being here has uh, been quite a challenge for me. <laughs> we shone a light upstairs, up in the roof there, and there was a tarantula this size. Frogs the size of small cars, um, and numerous things that fly, in the toilet especially. Camp life's been I think it's been pretty good, uh, but I hate the roosters. Uh, most roosters like to go off at dawn. These roosters start at like three in the morning. The most challenging part, I think, is the weather. Working under, under the sun and the humidity, yeah. It's somewhat stifling inside of the tent when there's no breeze. So we've resorted to sleeping outside in the grass. If you can persuade the bugs not to bother you too much. Uh, th this work here is incredibly physically challenging, but it's, it's good. I'll be going home with a few more blisters and some muscles I didn't know I had, but uh, certainly a, a better person for it. I think the whole situation just puts you out of your comfort zone. It just makes you realize what you're capable of. But despite any discomfort, the team enjoyed any downtime, chatting and getting to know each other. Uh, we've all interacted after the workday. There's camaraderie. Uh, nobody heads to bed early, nobody grabs out a book. Um, people interact, we joke, we learn about others' cultures from all over the world, and that was something that drew me to this project. They were not only building a physical bridge, they were bridging cultures as well. One of my favorite things about this opportunity has been communicating with the locals, and I'm very grateful that I do have Spanish skills. They may not be perfect, and they may laugh at me, but we all get along. The most rewarding and interesting part of the project so far, I'd say, has been the involvement of the locals and being able to give back to them. It's been a humbling experience. Carlos, a Bridges Tea Prosperity employee from Nicaragua and an expert in building bridges in remote areas, also enjoyed getting to know the volunteers. Bueno, para mí sería porque estamos implementando cosas que que no hemos hecho antes, entonces son experiencias nuevas. Entonces eso es lo positivo, gana más más experiencia uno. Y agradecerle a ustedes porque con ustedes 
eh, con brigadas como ustedes yo he tenido un poco más experiencia, compartir experiencia y voy conociendo personas, teniendo nuevos amigos. Uh -huh. Entonces siempre, cada día se va adquiriendo algo nuevo. Uh -huh. Work continued on the bridge. The pace unrelenting if the deadline was to be met. The suspenders had to be hung from the cable. In the right order, spaced correctly. A backbreaking job. It's really starting to look like a bridge now. Next, the decking had to be attached. Two teams, one on each side of the river, working towards the centre. It's almost unbelievable. Uh, with any modern equipment, just with basic tools, we've been able to make this bridge. Yeah, we are really proud of it. Finally, the handrail and wire fencing was installed. With the last sections of decking screwed down and attachments to the wire fence secured, the local community and municipal officials gathered for the inauguration of the bridge. The honour of cutting the ribbon went to Felicita, the grandmother of La Conga. Vamos a ver si lo voy a cruzar. Con mucha ayuda. Como no. Dios me debe dar el ánimo de pasarlo. The local community, the Bridges to Prosperity team and the CH Turm Hill Foundation volunteers have worked together, laughed together, eaten together. The result? Connected communities and lasting friendships. I, I really enjoyed reading the mission by B2P, that they really interact with the community members. They wanted to share all the knowledge and work together to build this so that it's not just a project that we come into their community, we help build it, and then we leave. This is something that's going to be a long-term, lasting impact. After 20 plus years designing and constructing bridges, I think it was just now when I realized uh, what the bridge was. I feel really proud to work for a company that sets aside a budget for community development projects like this. It really makes me uh, happy and proud to work for ch 2 Hill. What we're going to see is not the individual contributions of, of what the community did, what the team did, what Bridges to Prosperity did, but what you see is just a complete contribution made from the entirety of the, of the support team here, and it's just, just indistinguishable as to who did what. All we know is that we created something pretty amazing. A big thank you and well done to the CH2M Hill Foundation volunteers. <laughs>